Do you ever have one of those mornings where you're just like, oh, I just can't get up. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, Lord, give me the strength to get through this day. Well, the next lady will just inspire you like crazy. She is amazing. I just, I can't, I cannot prepare you enough for the inspiration this woman gives me. So let's check it out. Building spirituality, family, health, and business. This is The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant. Hey, Giant Builders. I'm excited to get to share with you Alma because she is such an inspiration, but also wanted to share with you that below is a sign up for my free PDF, Five Home Businesses. So get your copy. Hey, Giant Builders, welcome. And don't forget to like or subscribe to our social medias. Their links are below. Leave a comment because that helps us reach more people. So today's guest is Alma Thomas. Hi, Alma. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Uh-huh. My name is Minister Alma Thomas, and I am a motivational speaker an author, a playwright. Um, nah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. No, wait, I forgot one thing that I like to tell um, people that um, if you notice, I'm laying down. Um, and it's not because it's early in the morning and I was still sleeping, but it's because um, three years ago, I had a massive stroke um, that rendered my right side um, weak. So I do these um, interviews from my bed to be transparent about the things that I've been through in life and that I still haven't given up on life. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the story of your life? Because you've been through a lot. Oh, yeah. I had plenty of bad chapters in my life. I'll start with um, when my life really took um, a dark turn in 2009 when my son passed away from a massive heart attack. Oh. Um, it was February, February 13, 2009. And um, that was the darkest time of my life. As a matter of fact, he died February um, 13th. And on April 17th, that was his first birthday in heaven. And I was thinking that morning, I was like, I wonder if my grandma baked him a cake. If mm -hmm. they was a... Uh, singing happy birthday to him and for a brief moment I decided to unalive myself because I wanted to spend his first birthday in heaven with him I was like for 18 years I made his birthday special and this is really you know a special birthday because he's up there you know with he has my grandmother and other people, but he doesn't have his mom. And I put all my blood pressure pills into my hand and I was going to take the pills and a quiet voice just whispered to me, if you do it, you'll never see him again. Mm -hmm. And I put the pills back and I cried. And if you... um. And that's the day that I decided that I needed help to to go through this, that everybody was singing to me, oh, you're so strong. I don't know how you, you could have done that. I never, I can't imagine losing one of my children and all this stuff. And people were saying, um, he's in a better place. But in my mind, I was thinking, if he's in a better place, why don't your child go to the better place and mine come back? And because to me right now, his better place is in his room, but his room is it's empty. And people were saying, oh, 
my um ninety eight year old grandfather had a heart attack and he pulled through and I'm thinking, mm, ninety eight years old, why did God save him but took my son? And I was having all these feelings and all these emotions that I just couldn't deal with. And um I'm a minister, so people are expecting you to be so strong and um, I'm going to church Sunday after Sunday and I'm having these issues and I'm screaming out for help and everybody's just telling me if you love God, you'll, you'll get through this. And I'm saying, I know I love God, but I just don't know how to get through this. And um, I remember um one Sunday just running to the altar, crying out, God, you got to help me. And that's the day that... um. I decided that I needed help. And, you know, when you're in the um, in the church or the African-American community, they look down on mental health as it's taboo or you're, um, it's all in your head, mm-hmm. um, you're stronger than that, and it's okay if you go to see a doctor. But when you start thinking that, saying you're going to see a therapist or a psychologist or psychiatrist then they're thinking um it's all in your mind you're weak and um so I went to EAP at my job and I spoke to someone and even though I majored in psychology in school so I knew the stages of grief but it's so much different when you're going through it than you're reading it Mm -hmm. and um so I learned to um you know, that the stages don't come one, two, three, four, five, that you fluctuate between the the stages. You just can't get stagnant in any one stage. You have to go through it. And it's one day you might be um angry and it's the next day you might be accepting and then the next day you're back at angry again. So um I learned how to turn my pain into my passion um and I started a scholarship fund for my son called the Taishan Thomas Friends and Family Scholarship and to date we've given out 17 scholarships um to African American males of single parents who got accepted into college and they might need help getting their books or whatever mm-hmm. so we try to give out at least a $500 scholarship to each one um so um that phase of 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 my life um and then we had an apartment fire my apartment didn't catch on fire but the one two rows down did and they um condemned all the whole row of apartments so Mm -hmm. i found myself um homeless um and uh I went through the system and they placed us in a um bed bug um hotel. I could only stay there um for not even a night. I think me and my daughter stayed there for an hour and we called my sister and um we went to my mom's house and my mom has a one bedroom senior citizen apartment so we had to make do until I could find something. And then um, I got married, and um, I thought, okay, I was doing everything right. Um, he seen he was um put on the appearance that he was everything I wanted. And then after I got married, twenty four hours after, I was like, who did I marry? And I found out that he was a substance abuser, that he was addicted to crack cocaine and he didn't want any help because he was in denial that he was even on it and so we got a divorce and then and um april 23rd 2021 i suffered the massive stroke Mm -hmm. and i spent um two years in um a rehab um, sidebar, if you have anybody in a nursing home, 
um, check on your family. And if you have a nursing home near you, um, make it um, your volunteer um, opportunity to visit an old person, an elderly person, because a lot of them don't have um, friends and family and they lay there for years and there's a lot of neglect going on in mm -hmm. the nursing home system. So that's a sidebar. Because okay. um, I spent two years there and the things I saw and the things that I went through were horrendous. And I was thinking, I was like, if I can talk and my family comes to see me and these things are still happening to me, what's happening to um the people that don't have anybody checking on them and they don't have a voice? So that's just a, a sidebar. So that's basically my story. But the reason why I go on these podcasts and I tell my truth is because I want people to know that you can go through some challenging things. Um, you can go through some storms, but the water don't have to overtake you. The fire doesn't burn you. You don't give up on life. I say I had a choice. The choice was to be better or bitter. So I can lay here and feel sorry for myself and say, woe is me, woe is me, I can't walk. So my life is over. But I decided that I was going to live my best life based on the things that I can still do. I embrace the things I can still do and I accept the things that I can no longer do. So as I said earlier in the interview, that I'm an author. So before um, I had the stroke, I wrote two books and a number of anthologies. After I've had the stroke, I've written three books with one finger on my telephone. <laughs> because I can't use my right hand and that's my dominant hand. So I use my left hand and I type on my telephone and then I send it to my editor. But I didn't give up on my purpose in life because the one thing that I discovered on um, April 23rd, 2021 is that April 24th wasn't promised to me because when I had the stroke, the doctors um, said that I had a 1% chance of living and a 99% chance of dying. As a matter of fact, they called my family to my bedside and told them if they wanted to see me alive again, that they had to come that day. And even a nurse asked me, um, can I hold your hand while you... Um, transpire and I said no because even though they said I was breathing at the worst point of my life and I have asthma and when I have problems breathing it feels like an elephant is sitting on your chest but I didn't feel that that day I I felt like I was breathing fine so I said to them no I don't believe the report of the doctor and um that night they expected me to pass away. So they left me sitting in a chair overnight and nobody came to my room to check. And then in um the morning, early in the morning, the nurse tiptoed in my room and I said, hey, you left me in the bed, in the chair all night. I want to get in my bed. And she was like startled. And she said, no, no problem, Miss Thomas. And they put me back in my bed. So they expected me not to be there in the morning. But against all odds, I survived the stroke. And that's the name of my book, Against All Odds, Surviving a Stroke Against All Odds. So I want people to know that um, you don't have to give up in life. The cemetery is full of unfulfilled potentials, dead dreams and visions. Don't die with your purpose inside of you. Yeah, I had some bad chapters 
in my life, but I look at, have you um ever been to the carnival and there's a game there that you throw the ball really hard at the clown and the clown goes all the way back and just before you're ready to claim your giant teddy bear, the um clown bounces back up again. Well, they put something back in that clown that makes it bounce back. Well, when life throws me a really hard ball, I go all the way down and just before I'm ready to give up, I bounce back again because I have something in me called the bounce back spirit. So after each bad chapter, I bounce back because I look at life like a never ending book. It doesn't end until the end of your life. So after each bad chapter, you can turn the page and it's a blank page and you have a brand new start so you can start over again. So never stop chasing your dreams. Never stop dreaming because um, there's greatness in each and every one of us. And don't stifle your greatness because you had some bad chapters in your life, whatever it is. That is your lifelong dream. If you dream to go back to school, go back to school. If you dream to, um, that you can write a book, start by writing um, just one chapter. Um, if you want to start a business, you know, get your um, EIN number. Just do something. Keep moving forward. Um, Martin Luther King said this, that if you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. Just never stop moving. Wow. I want to make a sticker that says the bounce back spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you have been through a lot. I just, uh, I am in awe of like how you are able to just keep going i mean writing a book with one finger on your phone that's i have a hard time just sending a text <laughs> <laughs> so what i don't know where did you get this this oomph to conquer the world well for me um it's god that um I have God in my life, so I never go through anything alone. His word said he'll never leave us and never forsake us, and he doesn't. And that's how I'm able to go through everything and not give up on myself and not feel sorry. Like um people have told me like why do you go on these podcasts and um you show your picture and you're laying in the bed? And I was like, well, why don't you do what you want to do in life? Why have you given up on your dreams and you have the function of your whole body? So I want uh, people to know that even in my condition, even in my situation, I haven't given up on my dreams and the things that I want to do in life, I'm still doing them. Like, um, I'm still teaching um, Bible school once a week. I'm still speaking on virtual stages and on podcasts because for me, if I can inspire and motivate one person to get up off their seat of do nothingness and live life to the fullest, then my life won't be in vain. Amen. I am so proud of you, man. To you... God be the glory. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, so what's your next adventure? My next adventure is that um, I'm writing another uh, book on um, 
favor. And um, I'm just continuing my rehab. I know that um, God has promised me that I'm going to um, walk again. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting on that process, I'm just writing my books and I'm speaking on virtual stages until I can speak in, in person again. So I'm just, you know, taking each day, one day at a time, and motivating and inspiring people to live their best life. Wow. Well, you are definitely inspiring. I am just, I am in awe. You are awesome. So I want to give away one of your books. So Giant Builders, leave a comment in the messages and we'll have a drawing and give away one of Alma's books. Which book is your favorite? My favorite book is Dream Killers mm -hmm. um, because that identifies the people, places, and things that um, kill our dreams. So once you can identify the root cause of you not achieving your best life, then you can um, conquer those triggers one at a time because I did. I um, got over um, low self-esteem, um, self-doubt before I killed my dream killers, assassinated them. Um, I would have never got on this podcast um, laying down and feeling that people would think that I was less than my best. But once I killed those things that were hindering me, I was able to go on in life. So that's why it's my favorite book. And of course, it's because it's my first solo book. And when you are an author and you see your first solo book and you hold it in your hand, it's like holding your first baby, that you birthed out your first baby. And the joy that you get we're realizing, like, once you visualize something, once you're holding something in your hand, you're like, wow, I can do it. I'm an author. And that um, triggered me and to writing more and more books. That There's so many more books um, that I have in me that I'm ready to birth out. It's like I'm always buying book covers that inspire me. Once I buy the book cover and I see my name on it, I'm like, oh, okay, I got to write this book because I have this book cover. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the, make the book cover first and then fill it up. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I love that strategy. What's the name of your next book? Uh, the the book that I'm writing are the ones that are coming out at the um, beginning of the summer. What's the name I'm, of it? Oh, um, Surviving a Stroke Against All Odds. And the other one is called Faith. Okay. All right. Well, we will definitely be looking for those. Well, any closing thoughts? My closing thought to everyone would be, um, remember when we were children and we used to dare each other to do things? Well, on today... Um, double dog daring everyone to dream again, to awaken the dream in you. Even those dreams that you rocked to sleep and you thought you could never have, awaken them. Mm. Do, don't die with your dreams inside of you. Oh, I love that. All right, Giant Builders, I'm a double dog dares you to reach out and grab one of your dreams. So tell you what, share below what are your one of your dreams that you're going to accept almost double, double dog dare. <laughs> huh. Mama, thank you so much. You are quite an inspiration. I am so, I admire you so much. You are awesome. Thank you. To God be the glory Amen. that he has allowed me um, to have this joy that the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. Oh, that's a good place to close. All right. Thank you, Giant Builders. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. This has been The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant.